Where's everyone else joining us from? Please uh, feel free to write in the chat. As I've mentioned before, myself, Ramitin Weiss, my colleague, Simita Kunatakaran, and our founder, Martin Essel, are calling in from Vienna, Austria today. And we at the Zero Project look forward to getting this side event started in a couple of minutes, just giving everyone a bit more time to come in. And I would say that we'll end this short uh, Caribbean jazz interlude. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, Connie definitely did, one of our speakers, and she'll let you know why, as someone who's very passionate about dance. But I would like to, first of all, welcome everyone here to the 14th conference of state parties to the UNCRPD. We are very excited to have you with us. Today is all about arts and culture and specifically about arts and culture facilitating self-advocacy. And before we get started with the really exciting part of the event, our speakers and the innovative projects they've bought, brought forward, which are helping persons with disabilities, I'd like to go through some key housekeeping rules. Um, if at any time you see your video connection or the meeting connection going slow, I would suggest to put off your video while our speakers talk. This will ensure that no matter your internet connection or speed, we all have a really enjoyable event. So once the speakers do start, I would ask you to kindly put your videos off so we can spotlight the speaker and give him or her the full attention. And then of course, during interventions, during Q&A, um, you are more than welcome to open your video, open your audio, and engage with our speakers on this, I think, very exciting topic. Um, the next item for housekeeping is that this webinar is recorded. If you are not uh, happy with that, or if you have privacy concerns, I would kindly ask you to leave the webinar. Otherwise, by staying, you are consenting to this webinar being recorded, and we're very excited to have you with us. As you can see, live captioning is provided by good partners at AI Media. And I also want to point out um, our international sign language interpreters today, who, if I'm not mistaken, are Adam. And um, I think Adam and uh, let me see, Susan, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, give a big thank you to Adam and Susan who are ensuring that this event is also accessible to all of those joining us today. Um, also importantly for those who can hear me but not see me, my name is Robinson Weiss. I am a male in his early 30s. I'm wearing a blue shirt, blue dress shirt with short sleeves since it is very hot here in Vienna, Austria today. And I'm wearing a red tie with blue navy stripes. Behind me there is a gray, what is it, a, a white gray art background and a very colorful vivid painting which looks like um, uh, someone went to town with a crayon box. So a very colorful background. There's some red, some turquoise, and some white. But um, enough about me. Let's get this uh, event on the road. And we're very glad and thankful that uh, we were able to host this side event. And this is only possible because of great partners who continue to support our work here at the Zero Project. So with that being said, I would like to start off with some opening remarks. Specifically, we would like to give a big thank to the permanent mission of Austria to the United Nations who have helped us put together this event. So without further ado, I would like to introduce Hans Joachim Almos Lechner, the deputy permanent representative at the permanent mission of Austria to the United Nations in New York. Mr. Almos Lechner, the stage is yours. Thank you very much and good morning to everyone from, from New York. Um, it is my sincere pleasure to welcome you today uh, from our side to this very important side event, Arts and Culture Facilitating Self-Advocacy, organized together with our partners, the Essel Foundation, uh, with its Zero Project and the Austrian Cultural Forum New York. We are particularly honored to work with an Austrian NGO, which is this active not only in the Conference of States Parties, but who also runs, uh, but which also runs excellent projects on the ground. It is paramount to ensure that persons with disabilities can effectively enjoy their human rights. Accessible and inclusive art and culture are essential in this regard. They can be a powerful tool for the self-advocacy of persons with disabilities, enabling a meaningful and independent life and full participation in society. 
The provisions enshrined in Article 30 of the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities call on states parties to recognize the rights of persons with disabilities to take part on an equal basis with others in cultural life. This includes appropriate measures that enable persons with disabilities to have the opportunity to develop and utilize their creative, artistic, and intellectual potential, not only for their own benefit, but also for the enrichment of society as a whole. We need to ensure full and meaningful participation of persons with disabilities in art and culture, and we need to change our general approach from making policies and measures for persons with disabilities to making them with them. Today, we discuss how to bring the convention closer to people's lives in communities around the world. We will learn firsthand from persons with disabilities on how they engage with the arts, and we'll hear good practices and innovative ideas from practitioners in the field. Austria continues to advocate for accessibility and participation of persons with disabilities in all aspects of life. In this regard, we are currently in the process of finalizing the new Austrian National Plan on Disability for 2022 to 2030. And without further ado, let me hand over to my dear colleague, um, Michael Heide, Director of the Austrian Culture Forum New York. Many thanks. Thank you, Hans Joachim. Uh, there is not very much I can add to what you said. Uh, it is a great honor and pleasure for the Austrian Cultural Forum uh, to participate as a partner. And we are very grateful uh, to the ESO Foundation and to Zero Project to make this possible. Arts and culture facilitating self-advocacy. Uh, in arts and in culture, uh, well, people working in arts and culture are for a long time uh, aware of the issue uh, and are dealing with it uh, in many respects. Uh, we have persons with disabilities in arts and culture on all levels, uh, be it as artists, uh, be it uh, in cultural institutions on all levels, uh, and uh, especially also uh, as an audience, and the most challenging thing is to make it inclusive, to make it accessible for everyone, uh, which in some fields uh, seems to be easily feasible, and yet, uh, and in some others, uh, requires lots of innovations. And I'm very eager to learn from your best practices uh, and uh, very eager to see uh, how we can still improve what we are doing. Uh, so uh, without further taking your time, uh, I would like to hand over now to our speakers. Well, Mr. Haider, innovation, you hit the nail on the head. That is what we're all about at the Zero Project. And there's no one better to tell you about the innovations we've been able to foster and the disability inclusion work we do then our very own founder and chairman of the Essel Foundation, Mr. Martin Essel. To those of you in the art space, he might be a familiar face. And to those of you joining us from around the world, um, Mr. Essel, please do introduce yourself and the great work we do here at the Zero Project. Just as a reminder, Mr. Essel, you are muted. Hello, good morning, uh, good evening, uh, or, uh, wherever you are uh, working with us and being with us. Uh, a very um, warm welcome uh, from my side. I'm a, a male still in the 50s. Uh, and um, I'm so happy and proud to be with you. And as a founder and uh, chairman of the board of the Essel Foundation, I would like to extend my warm thank you to the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs for giving us the privilege of sharing its work with you all. What a wonderful opportunity. I feel really honored about this. Also a big thank you to our partner, the Permanent Mission of Austria, to the United Nations in New York, which continues to support our work and uh, representation here 
at the cusp. And the topic of today's talk has also brought the Austrian Culture uh, Forum in New York with a, uh, into the foray, a, a great institution that shares the richness of the Austrian arts and culture in the Big Apple and beyond. As we tune in here digitally, the analog magic of arts and culture has become more important than ever in today's world. The pandemic has shown that we can meet monumental challenges head on if and only if we work together. I strongly believe that a renaissance uh, and a true rethinking is on the horizon. The pandemic has illustrated to us how life fulfilling the arts can be, however, but also how devastating its absence can be. We will develop new models of human welfare and especially uh, the arts will play an incredible critical role in the self-advocacy of persons with disabilities. Today, you will hear about how this self-advocacy has been promoted through innovative practices and policies of my foundation, the Esla Foundation, has awarded from around the world. At the Zero Project, a division of the Esla Foundation, we identify, curate, and collate innovative practices and policies from all around the world, which allow us to strive for a world with zero barriers. Since 2007, we have amazed a global network of some 8,000 experts from 180 countries who have formed a kind of ecosystem that has brought forward around 700 selected innovations uh, from 150 countries. Isn't that amazing? I encourage you to visit, therefore, uh, zeroproject.org to explore this ecosystem for yourself. The well-known artist Marcel Duchamp once said, what art is in reality is this missing link, not the links which exists. It's what uh, you see that, art, that is art. Art is the gap. And it is the missing link that is bridged by the art um, between the discussions about employment, accessible transport, healthcare, uh, and other vital services that we believe is just as uh, vital to life. In my pers personal capacity as a patron of the arts, besides the Essel Foundation who has a purely social mission, I am involved in creating these bridges uh, um, Marcel Duchamp mentioned. I have recently commissioned a beautiful sculpture and Sumita, maybe you will show the first slide. Yeah, here we are. Uh, a, a beautiful uh, sculpture for the city of Vienna uh, that hopes to signify the indomitable spirit of its people during the pandemic. The sculpture itself is an inclusive piece of art that can be experienced by people with mobile and visual impairments. Beyond its physical stator, the sculpture will act as a missing, as, as a link between the art, the pandemic, and the UN SDGs using this culture to launch a unique campaign that will reveal a new and unique well-being index to be addressed to the United Nations and the Club of Rome. 
You can see a picture of uh, the sculpture here. And for those who cannot see it, it is a wooden uh, infinitely loop in three dimensions with carving symbols and seven seals that also tells the story of the sculpture. My family also curated one of the biggest contemporary art collections in Austria, which was recently donated to the Albertina, one of the most renowned museums in Vienna. Uh, so meet the next slide, please. And the next. Next and next. Yeah, uh, you have seen some uh, other uh, artworks uh, we have designed with artists uh, to be uh, uh, accessible. But here you can see that we are working together with the Albertina to design a new possibility to invite all persons with and without disabilities to um, get in touch with art. And uh, therefore, we have organized together a stakeholder dialogue. Uh, and you can see uh, two photos out of it. Uh, and it was organized by the Albertina and found out that the best way to declare art in museums is with a uh, uh, historical guy uh, and one guy with one disability so that he has or she has the opportunity to tell the story about the artwork in the way she or he feels it. And this is amazing, not just for persons with disabilities, but uh, for everybody. And it's uh, the way that I believe the arts, both performance and culture, share the message beyond words and uh, beyond language. It speaks to one spirit and can inspire societal mass change, ergo a renaissance. We all need uh, to have a new picture how to go forward with society. On the panel today, I am really delighted to be joined by dear friends of mine and advocates of the Zero Project. There is Connie Mandarakis, who is an incredible artist in her own right and uh, a Zero Project Intake Transfer Fellow. And there is uh, a good friend of mine, Doris Rothauer, who is a consultant, an international consultant, an expert on bringing together innovators in the art. I look forward to the interventions and inputs today and wish you all a fruitful exchange of ideas and approaches on how to continue to empower persons with disabilities through the arts. Thank you so much. Thank you, Martin. And you queued up what we, we marketed as the hat trick uh, prior to this event. With the European Football Championship going on, we said, you know, take time out of your schedule and come for the real hat trick to hear from the Zero Project, uh, Danceability, and Berufe Transfer. So, three great organizations um, doing innovative work in the arts and culture space. One thing I want to note at this point if any of our speakers are talking too, too fast or incomprehensibly, just let us know. Feel free to leave a comment in the chat section because we want to make sure that all of us are able to access um, the information we share with you today. With that being said, I would like to introduce and uh, ask Connie uh, Vandarakis to come in and to tell her story of how she has been able to use arts and culture to facilitate self-advocacy. Thank you very much, Robin. Um, I just want to audio describe myself a little bit. Um, I'm a middle-aged white woman <clears throat> with long gray-brown hair. I wear glasses and I have a purple shirt. Behind me is just a white background and I'm wearing the Zero Project green earrings today. Ah, great. <laughs> <laughs> so disability and the arts have been predominant lenses in my life 
having fa family members with craniofacial disability, hearing loss, and mental health disabilities has given me a lived experience in disability advocacy. My mother was an artist, a creative, Im who immersed us in art making and the love of creative pursuits. For 30 years, I served in higher education at a university dedicated to the education of the arts with degrees in visual, performing, and related arts. <clears throat> Sorry, just lost my place there a little bit. Um, my immersion in disability and in the arts allows for a new blended lens of understanding relationships between disability, arts and culture, self-advocacy, and our creative economy. While we were, are speaking here about Article 30, participation in cultural life, I must also include Article 27 of the CRPD, which is work and employment. It is essential that we understand the strong connection between access, training, and employment for people with disabilities in the arts and culture sector. Arts and culture are good for the economy. Arts and culture build local businesses. Arts and culture drive tourism. I would like to offer just a few numbers of how arts and culture affect different parts of the world, and in particular, the United States and the European Union. The United States Bureau of Economic Analysis in 2019 shows that nonprofit and for-profit arts is a $730 billion industry that directly employs 4.8 million art workers. This represents 4.2% of the nation's GDP, a larger share of the economy than in transportation, tourism, and agriculture. According to the European Commission Statistical Office, cultural and creative industry activities account for 3.7% of EU employment in 2015. That's 8.4 million art workers, which is more than the automotive industry. Such activities contribute 4.2% to the EU's GDP. For more statistics on specific countries and world reports, I would refer you to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development Creative Economy Reports, which have lots of rich information. Now, there are countless pra best practices around the globe for arts and culture, so I'm going to limit myself to just a few of my own experiences in the last year. Disability Pride Pennsylvania, a dis a disabled-led organization in Philadelphia promotes visibility and cultivates pride where our, within our community as we advocate for an inclusive world. Disability Pride Pennsylvania imagines a world where every disabled person feels pride through self-awareness, their identity, and their community at large. Their award-winning month-long Disability Pride Virtual PA created over 70 events in 30 days in June and July of the pandemic. For those who are into production statistics, Disability Pride uh, PA had over 12,000 engagements in its virtual platform, over 30,000 video minutes viewed, and over 23 countries were viewing the live events. Disability Pride PA promotes arts and culture in creating accessible events, contracting with disabled artists for their monthly concert series, providing scholarships for post-secondary education, and having an artist supply fund to help disabled artists with materials to create their art. They partner with other organizations and museums presenting the way to lead in disability inclusion. Another organization, Disability Equality in Education, was a runner up in the Zero Project Education Awards in 2020. They were awarded a grant by the Pennsylvania Development Disabilities Council to reduce stigma throughout Pennsylvania. But as a result of their events, they had a global impact. Thrive Aid, the art of protest, was a worldwide virtual event debuting on December 3rd, 2020, on the International Day of Disabled People, 
to celebrate the lives and contributions of disabled people through disability art and culture, and to end and in protest to end the stigma toward disabled people worldwide. It was an international collaboration between the United States, the United Kingdom, and Australia. The overall message is that we are creative, resilient, and we will thrive and survive with equal access to support. Thrive Aid debuted over three time zones that day, starting in Australia, hosted by Disability Busters. Then Disability Pride Pennsylvania hosted both the United Kingdom and the United States showings. The disabled artists represented it were 30 in number and from different countries, including Australia, Brazil, Germany, Japan, Singapore, the United Kingdom, and the United States. Thrive Aid was seen by over 5,000 people that day and has had over 2,000 views after December 3rd. Now let's travel to Austria for a moment, to the city of Vienna. Since 1993, Impulse Dance International Dance Festival has hosted inclusive dance workshops in their programming. This contemporary dance festival is always on the cutting edge of contemporary dance practice, which includes mixed ability dance. Disabled dance artists have been welcomed as instructors and participants. For over 22 years, Impulse Tanza has hosted Danceability International's month-long teacher training program for people with and without disabilities. Danceability International is a Zero Project Award recipient in innovation and a winner of the Zero Project Impact Transfer Program, which is a partnership between the Essel and Ashoka Foundations. Danceability has over 700 certified teachers in 45 countries. Danceability has affiliate organizations all over the world and has been the jumping point for inspiring how inclusive contemporary dance is evolving. Now, there are many best practices happening in the, around the world. And in my experience, we do a fabulous job at talking to other like organizations. The challenge is to build bridges between economic, business, and innovation centers and organizations. How do we build arts and culture policy and strategy so that the people at the top of the decision making understand and model inclusive practices for people with disabilities in arts and culture in terms of, asks, in terms of access? in terms of training, in terms of employment. Zero Project is on the forefront of building bridges as they recognize the importance of arts and culture as part of the creative economy that creates a world without barriers. Here to tell you about the Zero Project Solutions Committee on Inclusive Arts and Museums is Doris Rothhauer, who was my mentor at the Impact Transfer Program and is down my colleague and friend, Doris. Thank you. Sorry uh, for the pause. Uh, I just had to unmute myself. Uh, Connie, thank you very much. Uh, I'm happy to hear that I'm not only your mentor, but also your friend, which I have to say, it, our relationship developed into a great friendship. And I can say the same with Martin Essel. Uh, I'm very happy uh, to not only work with him, but also be a kind of friend. That's at least how I see it. Uh, and thank you very much, Martin, for introducing me already. Uh, for those who can't see me, I'm also white, I'm female, um, I'm middle aged, <laughs> still in my 50s, um, and I have blonde hair. And I'm sitting in my home office at the moment, a uh, white wall behind me with some glimpses of artwork that belong to my private, uh, I can't say it's a collection, but it's stuff that I like to have around with me uh, from friends, artists. Um, and uh, as Martin already said, I'm an impact consultant, art manager and consultant, and I'm focusing on the cultural impact of arts. 
So that means that I'm helping art institutions, artists and other creatives to design, manage and scale their social and cultural impact. And when we talk about impact, uh, I think inclusion is at the heart of changing the world for a better. And I'm very thrilled that with my work, I can contribute a little to make the world more inclusive and also make the arts more inclusive. Also, I'm proud of being part, an active part or taking an active part in the Zero Project community and um, in partnering uh, with the Essel Foundation. So for the last three years, um, I have been mentoring some of the art institutions and innovators that presented their solutions at the Zero Project conference. Um, Connie mentioned already, I was the mentor of danceability. I was the mentor of the Museum of Modern Art in New York and Capito in Germany, which is an NGO that among other activities educates people with disabilities to be art educators in museums uh, and art institutions. And at the Zero Project, our most recent approach in broadening and expanding this group of innovators uh, and making their expertise available uh, to everyone, we started what is called uh, the Zero Project Solution Community. There are several solution communities in this whole Zero Project universe. And the community that I manage is a community on inclusive arts and museums which I will present you now, our work and our approach. Uh, but before I start my presentation or before I ask Sumita to start it, I would uh, like to say a few words about my personal vision uh, of an inclusive world uh, through the arts. Uh, during Corona, we already heard it today, uh, we all have experienced uh, from the lockdown of art institutions, what we are missing when we can't enjoy art when we have no access to it. We feel a lack of inspiration. We feel a lack of creativity, a lack of distraction, of joy, happiness, and hope. We get anxious, insecure, hopeless, sometimes even depressed. And now we all have experienced something that people with disabilities experience quite often, apart from Corona, which is that they are confronted with barriers uh, to have full access to the arts. The arts and culture are essential pillars of social development. May it be on a personal level, may it be on a community level, may it be for society in general. They provide meaning, values and attitudes, very important. They give orientation, interpretation, and of course, knowledge. Art increases personal well-being. This is more or less proven also by scientific studies uh, in the meantime. They improve self-esteem and they generate emotions and open horizons. And this is why they are so important also for people with disabilities. So cultural participation is a fundamental part of the human experience and has to be accessible for all and for everyone. And here is where our new Zero Project community comes into the picture. So please, Sumita, uh, start sharing my presentation. So uh, what you see here on the first slide, for those who can't see it, it's just the title, Zero Project Solution Community, on inclusive arts and museums. And it is about new and innovative approaches to inclusive arts and art education. Our community members in this community, which is permanently growing, are all change makers. They are innovators and experts in the field of inclusive arts. Um, and just to name a few, which are all awardees uh, from the uh, uh, Zero Project uh, conference is, for example, the Museum of Modern Art in New York, the Manchester Museum in Manchester, the Gulbenkian Foundation in Lissabon, the Kunsthistorische Museum in Vienna. They are all offering a broad range of programs to make their institutions and art collections accessible. 
to people with all kinds of disabilities. So they offer special workshops, special tours, including sign language, easy language, tactile objects, or technological advices and apps. Um, we also have experts in our community group like Conny, Conny Vandarakis, who just spoke to us. Uh, we have consultants, we have educators, we have advocates, and many others who share their insight and experience. And Sumita, if you switch to the next slide, uh, here you can see our approach to arts and culture facilitating self-advocacy. So uh, for those who can't see it, uh, I will talk you through. So it's, it, it's a kind of pyramid. On the bottom is what art education is. Art ed we all in the community believe that art education is a fundamental task of any art institution to deliver art uh, and culture to their audience by enriching the educational, social, and emotional experience. The problem with it is that yet people with disabilities are often denied equal participation or they have a negative or unwelcoming experience. Barriers can be physical, they can be by attitude, they can be social or programmatic. They may relate to communication, to policies, to transportation. So this exclusion can lead to social isolation and negatively impacts the quality of life of those people. So next step on the pyramid is, uh, no, some, yeah, is inclusive art education. This is more or less a common solution where what I mentioned before, special tours, workshops, and other resources are offered to people with disabilities to give them the opportunity to participate. But what we as a community in our discussions identified is that this is not enough. There is still a problem with the common way of inclusive art education in the sense that um, um, it's still, there is still a separation and exclusion happening. For example, if you consider a tour in sign language that is offered uh, for people with hearing impairments, this does normally not address people without disabilities. So there is a kind of separation and there is a kind of exclusion. Or consider a tour guide who is giving uh, a tour for people with disabilities that person, the tour guide, is most commonly someone without disability, even if he or she is familiar with special needs. So again, there is a kind of separation and exclusion. So what do we, what approach uh, do we work on? So our solution is to take a holistic approach to art, uh, to inclusive art education. What does this mean, holistic? What we think is important is that inclusive art education is not only offered for persons with disabilities, but also by persons with disabilities. And this is someone, something we are working on. This is also something that uh, Martin Essel showed us um, in his uh, project work with the Albertina. And um, why is this so important? Experience shows that people without disability especially enjoy tours guided by people with disabilities. Uh, and why is this? Um, Sumita, next slide, please. Uh, because their perspective is full of detailed descriptions that are really astonishing. If you ever have experienced a tour uh, given by someone who has a kind of disability, they are, their tours are full of personal opinions and stories that are touching and that go far beyond what we normally see or hear in tours. It opens and challenges our way of thinking. And what you see here uh, in the slide is a drawing that was made by Sigrid Kundela. So Sigrid is one, uh, of, uh, one of those tour guides um, who, has, uh, who is a cranio, cranio cerebral patient and she offers, she organizes museum tours for craniocerebral trauma patients. And the drawing that she made here, she describes in her own words. So I read it for you, also for those who cannot see it. So 
in her own words. The sketch is drawn in landscape format. As headline, we read special guided tour for everyone. The letter G of the word guided is walking on small feet. Below the headline, you see five persons and a showcase with an art object. It alludes to one of the most famous items at the museum, uh, which is at the Kunsthistorische Museum, where she makes the tours. On the far left side sits the museum guide in a wheelchair. He is, he is young and visually impaired, as the badge on his arm tells us. He keeps a megaphone in his hand. In the speech bubble under his wheelchair, we read my favorite figure. Right of him stands the showcase with the figure. Right of the showcase is a group of four visitors, one child and three adults of different age. The child is a boy and says, great. Behind him asks a young man, what? Behind him, another man asks, why? And the last visitor is an elderly woman with a cane. She asks, who? Um, so this is uh, Sigrid's um, drawing. And now uh, in the next slide, uh, let's see, let's watch Sigrid uh, at, her, uh, at her work. We will see a short excerpt from a video that we produced for the last uh, Zero Project conference. And uh, we will see an excerpt of two minutes where Sigrid Kundela uh, shows us in the tour her favorite object at the Kunsthistorische Museum. Sumita, please start the video. Hello, here is the next figure we want to show you. Do you see the bear? But the bear is with a gun, so shooting the hunters, what does he want to say? But it's not only the bear you can see, like a teddy bear for children, it's a bear for grown-ups. Because um, on his top you can see a cap, and uh, the cap is showing the bees because a bear likes much more to eat honey. Um, the head, you could take away, and under the head is a, uh, a glass where you can drink whiskey, gin, or something else. Um, he is from the high society. That's why he's wearing a golden jacket. And the gun is golden too. Looking down, he is standing on a ground that's from a city where on the back side, a very small dog is lying, so he isn't afraid of the dogs. And when you move the bear, like a railway, then it opens, and when it opens, there you can see the games for grown-up, where you can play chess and tic-tac. And on the left side, you see a small hill. Below the hill is a monkey sitting and telling you about uh, the um, law from this country. So it's bare, you can see, not for children, for grown up, and who knows who have been drinking the bear inside, because it was built 1580, so very long ago, and as well in Castle Ambras, a very old castle in the Tyrol. Yeah, and when this museum had been built, Lots of this castle came to Vienna. So you have to come and see this bear who is telling you much more than only the gun. Okay, thank you. Next slide. Yeah. So uh, I also have to admit, otherwise uh, our work would not be necessary in the zero uh, in the in our solution community. There's still a long way until tours uh, offered by people with disabilities become a common uh, service. Uh, there's also still a long way to go until people with disabilities become staff members in museums and art institutions. 
why is this and what are the challenges that we identified at the, and that we as a uh, community are working on. So one is, not uh, surprisingly, there are still a lot of prejudices regarding potentials and performance of people with disabilities. Um, there is the attitudes of visitors um, that are not familiar with people with disabilities. So museums must be considerate and aware of these attitudes. Museums must also be aware of the care needs of people with disabilities when they, um, uh, when they have them as staff members so that they, those people don't feel left alone. Uh, and there are, of course, individual limitations uh, of museum staff in terms of making contact with people uh, with disabilities. There is a lack of time resources regarding the integration of people with disabilities in the staff and in the museum. There is a lack of legal framework for an exclusive labor market in each country. And last but not least, inclusive employment in museums requires change management as to integrating uh, those people into the organization and into the staff. So these are some of the challenges that with our continuously work as a community, as a zero project solution community, we are addressing. Uh, we have regularly meetings, we give workshops, uh, and we are working on new formats, how to um, uh, find solutions to these uh, challenges and how to broaden our expertise. And I would like to close uh, my presentation with a manifesto, uh, which was uh, more or less the first uh, work the, uh, uh, the, com the solution community did. Uh, and that uh, manifesto was um, uh, uh, a contribution to the Zero Project Conference uh, in 2021 in February. Uh, Sumita, next slide, please. Uh, I'll read it for those who can't uh, see it. Um, we, the Zero Project Solution Community on Inclusive Arts and Museums, believe in the power of arts and culture to transform and impact society. Exposure to and participation in the arts promotes and strengthens community, economic growth, education, and health and well being. In accordance with the UNCRPD, the Marrakesh Treaty and the American Disability Act of 1990, this committee believes in removing barriers for people with disabilities in order to have access to the arts, its buildings, education and trainings and employment opportunities. It also has a positive impact on freedom of self-expression, creativity and imagination, and vitality for all people. An accessible world in arts and culture reinforces vibrant, exclusive communities, supporting the work of disabled artists, supporting independent living and entrepreneurship for them. To achieve this, we need to create job profiles, a legal framework and specific resources to fully integrate people with disabilities in the arts and culture. And this is what we are working on. Thank you. Thank you, Connie, and thank you, Doris. That really was a lot to digest. So what I suggest for everyone is to take a bit of innovation bedside reading. And I just posted something in the chat, which is our Zero Project Almanac, a 296 page publication. And if you go to page 124, starting there, we have an arts and culture section, which includes all of the great innovations you just heard of. So all the institutions and all the Zero Project awardees, which Doris and which Connie mentioned, are right there. So feel free to download it, share it with your friends and with your network. And with that being said, I would like to invite everyone here in our side event today, joining us digitally, to come in with your questions and answers. Um, I feel free to either post them in the chat or to post them as uh, audio intervention. Um, we encourage you to put on your video to identify yourself and ask the questions. You can either raise a virtual hand or just go for it. As I said, this is going to be an informal um, exchange. And um, 
I'll take the prerogative of the moderator to pose a question, which um, which uh, I think Nicole Borg had to um, specifically Connie in regards to the Creative Economy Report. Perhaps Nicole, you would like to pose that question. Hi, and um, thank you for the presentations. They are very interesting. Um, because I needed to know the full title of the um, United Nations report. And yes, they have uh, written this to me in the chat. So yes, I took notes on it. Thank you very much. All answered. Wonderful. Yes. And yes. if I'm not mistaken, Doris, you wanted to share a video. Thank you very much. Ah, yes, Paul. Uh, can I ask my question? Sure. Um, uh, Come in and then we'll, we'll hand over to Doris who has one more video she would like to share with us. But go ahead, Paul. Okay. Thank you very much for the this event. I'm a blind person from Kenya, enthusiastic in terms of art and culture. And I'm currently doing an online summer school training in the Galloway Island about this article 30. And uh, I'm very pleased because I have a passion for art and culture. My question would be, because in the global South, you find that uh, our countries in Africa, art and culture is not given an opportunity in terms of driving for persons' abilities. And you find that we are really missing a lot. And myself being an artist, I have done music. I've written some memoirs, books here and poems here and also interested in terms of the issues around accessibility of museum. How can we be enabled or supported to ensure that we come up with a better programs or a, a economic viable projects which can enable us to be participants in the community? Because we find it's a big challenge. And currently, I believe that uh, due to the experience I got from outside Kenya, I believe it's an opportunity if well supported, many more persons' abilities can be empowered economically and socially. I run a, a YouTube channel called Disability Sausage Media, where I advocate for different issues regarding art, ableism, and also issues of persons' abilities. I believe that if I may get a better response, it will also apply to other countries within the global south where we face a lot of challenges in terms of inclusion and also in terms of our participation since most agencies do not put us persons with disabilities in center for their activities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paul. So to summarize, your, your question is how can we bring in museums from the global south into this conversation? Is that correct? Paul, can you hear us? Correct. And it's correct, and also to see how we can network as uh, uh, artists with disabilities with other parts One of the book. world, like Austria well, and other if countries. You could, if you could share the links to some of the stuff you mentioned, so all the other participants here with us can also uh, engage with you. And I'll let, I think Connie had um, some interventions she would like to come in with. Paul, thank you for your question. And it's a very profound uh, question. I um, have done some work with the Unmute Festival in Cape Town. It is a very um, global scale um, dance. It, well, it's inter arts festival. It's called the Unmute Festival where they deal with ableism, colonialism, um, some other, um, they have performances and it's usually in October. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to connect you with them, but they are a really good source on the continent. Um, I also know in, uh, we have many um, great projects on disability from um, the continent of Africa as well. Doris, you would like to come in please. Uh, yes, I can also add that, uh, you know, some of those museums who have really uh, huge resources and knowledge built up, like the Museum of Modern Art, they have built it up for over 30 years now, they do help other museums to get this expertise as well. 
So, uh, and this is part of the, uh, of the community that I manage for the Zero Project, that uh, the expertise we have, we want to open it up for everyone and we want to make it accessible for those who have lack of that experience and those who would need that experience. So, uh, hopefully, I mean, we started our work this, just this year in January, February, but hopefully in the future, we will be able to um, have it almost like a platform a knowledge uh, database where you can get information where you can con uh, where you can get contacts and where you can get help and support for uh, from those who have the knowledge already uh, and that it is being transferred for to those who need it and want it Talking about opening it up to everyone, Doris, uh, let us uh, know how can we best- Since I'm using a screen reader, I cannot be able to type. I can Paul? shout my email address. Okay, uh, and perhaps Paul, um, let, let me make a suggestion. I think Doris, okay. with your consent, can we share your email address um, with sure. the group um, so they know where to reach you? So Paul, what I will do is I will post Doris's email address um, in, into the chat. And do get in touch with her. I think she'll be able to kind of facilitate and share the, the collective wisdom which has been developed in the arts and community group. And um, Doris, if I'm not mistaken, there was a video you'd like to share with our participants as well. Would you like to, to narrate yes. and produce it? Actually, it's a video that uh, Connie directed, uh, and it's a dance video. And I think it's, a, it's so emotional because uh, the things we are talking about, if you talk about them, you don't get the no emotional aspect. You really have to experience it, how it is to include people with disabilities in the arts and kind of either perform or uh, communicate uh, together. And this dance video was also produced for the Zero Project Conference this year in February. Uh, so Zero Project partnered with the Austrian um, film uh, uh, production company by the name of Neulicht and with Danceability uh, International uh, on the, uh, under the guidance of uh, Connie. And what you will see, all the contributors are either award-winning programs from the Zero Project or they are people who are uh, in various educational, vocational, social entrepreneurs in various fields of businesses uh, they all came together for that video in the spirit of dance to celebrate disability inclusion. And I think, uh, Sumita, you can share that video now, which I really, really love.
I think for me, this is the best example of how art uh, um, facilitates and fosters uh, self-advocacy. Not much more you can say or add to that. Ab absolutely, Doris. And I think between that video and the Caribbean jazz, I would go so far as to say this has been the most musical COSP side event this year. And uh, I would like to invite everyone else to continue to come in with some interventions. I've noted uh, Mr. Fabrizio Fea in the chat who informed us about some of his cultural activities in Italy. And I perhaps I would encourage him to come in and to tell us a bit more about it and specifically maybe ask a question to Doris or Connie. Um, well, it, it, it wasn't my intention to, to come in. I just wanted to share a bit of uh, uh, my experience uh, uh, in my rehabilitation center for persons with uh, intellectual disabilities. We started uh, uh, at the beginning just as a little bit of art therapy, one of the activities of my center in Rome. And uh, later it came out uh, that uh, our clients are really art artists. It's not just uh, rehabilitation, nothing to do with that. So we established a bigger and larger uh, atelier, art atelier. And from there, we started our huge experience participating in European projects and going around Europe in regular uh, galleries, exhibitions. Uh, we do it several times here in Rome as well. And uh, well, we are becoming a little bit uh, famous. Uh, if you see our uh, uh, paintings, uh, they are easily recognizable coming directly from <clears throat> from my clients. So we are very uh, proud of that. And later we started also to uh, work with uh, ceramic, but with the Raku ceramic, that is a very particular uh, way of um, making ceramic directly on fire. Um, and the colors, you discover the colors after they come out from the oven, from the real uh, fire. So, <clears throat> Also with that, we are moving. And I think that it's amazing because the main thing is not only for us that are working with, with them, with, with the clients, but is the self-esteem and how they are growing, uh, how they are becoming more um, conscious of who they are. And I think that this is one of the main goals of, uh, of my uh, center working together with these, uh, with, with these uh, persons. So I just wanted to share a little bit with, with you and because I'm very proud of, uh, of the work that they are doing, uh, not us. In that case, Fabrizio, I actually have some homework for you. So I'm gonna post the URL of our Zero Project call for nominations, which is still open till Sunday, June 20th. And I encourage you, to nominate the work you're doing and you will be, if successful, and if our peer review experts de deem uh, this as something also innovative, you'll be able to join Doris and Connie in their community. And I would strongly encourage you as you've heard and seen the great work being done. So please uh, bookmark uh, the call for nominations website. And as said, I encourage not only you, but everyone here okay. um, to come in and nominate their work. Um, Thank you very much said, for that. You're welcome. With that being said, um, are there any other uh, questions, specifically questions to uh, Doris or Connie about their work? Well, I see that everyone is still um, digesting uh, the great information which they've taken in in this webinar so far. So I'll take uh, the moderator's and maybe ask a bit more of um, let's say a critical question. Um, Connie and Doris, uh, I think Connie specifically, you mentioned that the arts industry is a $730 billion industry. And if we take uh, as reports uh, fashioned by the World Health Organization, we there are roughly an approximately 1 billion uh, persons with disability in the world, approximately 15% of the world's population. So with those two figures, why are we not there yet where we would like to be 
terms of self-advocacy. If it's such a big market and there are a substantial amount of uh, people in the world, persons with disabilities, what's holding us back? Well, I, I think one history is holding us back because if, if, if we go to the great art museums, there are many artists who had disabilities. They had um, intellectual disabilities, physical disabilities, but it's not in the narrative of their history. So once, so one thing we need to do is change the narrative of what's spoken about these artists so that we understand the full spectrum of artistry in terms of it's a normal part of the conversation to have disability uh, when we talk about artists. The, the second thing I think was the, the uh, challenges that Doris uh, put up um, regarding um, disability inclusion. I think one of the thing that um, I wanted to comment on our Italian friend Fabrizio is that what he learned was mutual learning. He started out in therapy. What he learned was his clients had artistic potential. So then it became an economic revenue for the clients. And I think it's really important to um, learn from each other, I think is a very important aspect. And then the third thing that I would say just went right out my head, so I don't remember it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, those, are, those are the two big things, and maybe Doris has something to add as well. No, I think uh, what you said is really important. Uh, the history, you always have to understand where things come from. Why do we have this prejudice? Why do we have these challenges that we deal with? Um, and uh, yeah, and integrating uh, is uh happening in small steps because it's a big effort it doesn't bring uh, fast money uh, it doesn't bring big visitor numbers yeah? many art institutions are dependent on uh you know proving their success in numbers um and uh and this is uh yeah so the steps are small and uh but they are important and i think a lot of change is already going on it just takes time we have to be aware of that Absolutely, Doris. Thank you. But together with the work you and Connie do, those steps are being made and those steps are being made in a fast and swift fashion. I would like to hand over to Mrs. Abel, Julia Abel, who I see has raised her virtual hand. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for everything you have uh, shared today. It was very interesting and enlightening to get some input on, on the issue. And uh, you've actually already answered part of my question, uh, which was uh, what, what the barriers are uh, on uh, making art and culture even more inclusive. Um, and that the problem also is an economical one sometimes or when it comes down to numbers. Uh, so I want to add to that uh, question and answer maybe, uh, in your contact with other art institutions, what are their fears or their problems, the barriers they face? So you have so, so many great projects, so many good examples. Uh, why are others not immediately jumping on board and want to imitate that uh, or move forward with projects like that? Thank you. That's a, that's a really great question, Julia. And, um, I would, I would start by saying, um, you know, it's about first awareness, right? If you don't have a person with a disability in your family, you're not aware of disability. Now we know the numbers are growing and we also know that um, they're the baby boomers, which is uh, the, the generation of people between the 60s and 70s, which I'm in, are now aging into disability. So that disability number is growing. Um, so we have to bring about more awareness um, to have conversations. I think Zero Project does a great job of uh, highlighting um, uh, best practices. And the more we, we get the information out there about best practices, the more things um, begin to um, kindle in other ways and build other opportunities. Doris, do you have anything to add to that? Um, 
my experience, which is mainly in art institutions and museums, especially the bigger art institutions, where there is still a very hierarchical structure and uh, uh, art educators are at the bottom of the hierarchical pyramid. So those are the people who want to bring in people with disabilities as art educators. They want to bring it in as part of the staff, but um, their work is just happening uh, at the bottom of the pyramid. They have to convince the people in the leadership positions in art institutions that this is really the future uh, of art education and of art institutions in general. So that so to make art institutions more diverse, more inclusive, more sustainable, there's a lot of topics, not only uh, inclusion, is like all organizations in business, in uh, politics, wherever, art institutions have to go through the same process of awareness and, um, and that leadership, that it is a leadership task to make their, to make uh, a leader's institution, uh, the institution of a leader more inclusive, more diverse. Uh, this is, um, yeah, it's, it is a leadership topic. Uh, we have to convince those who are really uh, on the top of the pyramid. And of course, it's a political issue as well, because what we experience, for example, one of the challenges that I said is lack of legal framework um, to bring uh, people um, with disabilities into an art institution, uh, making them uh, members of the, of the staff. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, I think, um, yeah, there's a lot of work we still need to do um, to convince leaders and also politics. So really lobbying uh, and advocating for the importance. And that's our task, we all know, right? <laughs> On that note, I think uh, that's a wonderful uh... A wonderful word and wonderful sentence to end on Doris and I would like to encourage both you and Connie to give all of us a bit of homework you know the tasks which we can take out into the world so perhaps in five to ten words give us something which we can take and which we can translate what we heard today into immediate action. Uh, the first thing I would say is have a conversation with someone that wasn't here and tell them what you heard you know, ha having a conversation is always the first step and building relationships. Inviting people with disabilities to the table is the second thing that I would say. Thank you, Connie. Doris? I would say the same, spread, spread the word, uh, talk about it and uh, get the experience uh, yourself. Uh, I mean, my, I was drawn into it because I remember one of the first projects that I did with Martin Essel together. We invited people with disabilities to, this, to a series of workshops at Albertina. And this was the first time I became aware of how they experience art, how they talk about it. And this completely opened my heart. Uh, and I think you have to experience it. It's so important. And I think like the dance video with Connie, I have never danced with the people with someone in a wheelchair, but I would like to, because if I watch a video like this, then this and only through experiencing it, we are able to be uh, advocators. All right, everyone, next week, same time Zoom call, you will hand in your homework. Let us know how those conversations have went. But on a more serious note, I would like to thank everyone for joining us today in a digital capacity. I hope despite the digital barriers, you were able to feel uh, really the work Doris and Connie have done and continue to support all around the world. Uh, we like to think that you walk away today with a bit better understanding uh, of how really arts and culture facilitates self-advocacy. As mentioned by Connie and Doris, please feel free to share the word about what you've heard, point out museums, maybe ask the museums you visit whether they are offering accessible art tours, whether they are offering accessible museum guides, and if not, ask them why. You as a consumer have power, and I think that's something Connie and Doris were able to also let us know today. So again, 
Um, a big thank you from my end, um, also from Sumita Kunashakaran, our civil society lead who did great work in facilitating all the presentations and videos you've seen today. Thank you for her support. And uh, I wish you all a great week. And I look forward to being in touch with you. The Zero Project looks forward to being in touch with you. And uh, feel free to reach out to us through our website, engage with us through our publications, and also importantly, do identify any innovative practices or policies you need. My colleague Sumita just posted the website. And uh, with that being said, take care and goodbye. Thank you very much. Arrivederci. Thank you. Ciao. Goodbye. Bye. Bye, Muno. Bye from Kenya. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Bye from Vienna. Bye from Uganda. And a bit of Caribbean music while everyone leads out because this is the most musical cosplay side event till date. <laughs>